Welcome to China Manufacturing Decoded from Sofist, the podcast where we take you through the major news and topics facing importers and manufacturers in China and Asia today. Hi everyone again. Thanks for joining us here on the pod. It's episode 96 this time. I'm Adrian from the team. Here's our host and CEO, Renaud. Hi Renaud. Hey. Hi. Hi Adrian. Is everything all right on your side? Oh, as as all right as it can be in Europe at the moment, yeah, mm. it's a very challenging time for many, many, many reasons. And mm. you know, with the whole Ukraine war going on, my heart goes out to all the people there affected. All we can do is try and help, I guess, in any way we can, and you know, maybe donate something or whatever. But yeah, it's it's a it's a difficult time at the moment. And I mean, as we mentioned.、Um, Last week on the podcast, how does that crisis in Ukraine or war affect、mm. supply chains? And and one of the topics was sort of energy security, and that's somewhat related to what we're talking about today, in terms of impact on the environment. And to be clear, today's topic is. What is the cradle to cradle product design concept? So, cradle to cradle or C two C. If you're listening, you might have heard of it. And with you know today's interest in sustainability for many reasons,、uh, it's a it's a good idea. This product design concept has certainly been more important. Before we get into that, though. Can I start off by just asking you a little bit about the China Hong Kong COVID situation? Because I've noticed in the press recently, here at least in the UK, that they're、mm. reporting there's been a lot of outbreaks all around the country now. So、right. it seems to be more difficult. Yes, you're right. I mean, we know that China is fighting a battle that they cannot win in the long run. I guess,、uh, and. It's becoming more and more apparent. So there are places、mm. that used to be what they call medium risk, where they effectively targeted, you know, a, a specific geographic area, and 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 people could not go out, and they were tested like every day, you know, for example in Suzhou, and then now the Suzhou Industrial Park,、um, sorry, Singapore Industrial Park in in Suzhou. Now this area is. Sort of good to go, but there are some other places like Shenzhen, which was already medium risk last time we spoke,、uh, mm. especially the downtown area, especially around Futian, just next to the Hong Kong border.、Mm. Uh, it hasn't gotten any better.、Uh, unfortunately, it might be getting worse. There's a lot of blocks where there are, you know, cases, very recent cases. And that means there's a、um, there are lockdowns, you know, at the at the micro level. Let's let's say this way.、Um, some you know, a bunch of people from our Shenzhen office、um, are stuck at home.、Right? Yeah, and、um, so and they get tested regularly, and it, it's、mm-hmm. it's very very well organized. I have to say they、uh, <laughs> they take it quite seriously. They put the the the, the resources behind it. And they have these、uh, sort of neighborhood—I、uh, don't know what to call them—organizers or, or,、mm. or monitoring officers, as you like,、uh, who, um, who 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 organize all that. My、uh, my friend in Futian,、uh, mm. she she volunteered to become one of those people at her community,、uh-huh. so she had to get on all of the、uh, you know the protective stuff and go around with the clipboard and organize everybody. Yeah, it's pretty、uh-huh. uh, pretty surreal. Yes, yes, right. And so, yeah, as as always, some people are wondering, hey, how long can they keep it up like this? And、mm. frankly, we have no idea. <laughs> I mean. Has it ever looked that bad in China since, let's say,、uh, first quarter of 2020? Uh, sorry, when was that? Yeah, 2020. Yes, yeah, yeah.、Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They were really on top of it for a long time, and and now it's not just Shenzhen. If you look along the coast, it's a lot of places where it's popping up, and.、Mm. Yeah,、uh, I can only say very high uncertainty, and let's let's all hope that it doesn't go into a a, 
a very damaging kind of lockdown of very wide areas, which is really what mm. they're trying to avoid. But there's, there's going to have to be a time when they lift it and and I'm sure that they know it, right? And it's mm. at the same time, you contrast that with Hong Kong. It's kind of interesting. The government has kind of let it go now. And there's many more cases than reported. So I don't know. Mm. Reported number of cases now is maybe 30,000 per day, which is still very high <laughs> when you yeah. when you compare it to the population of 7 million people. But they uh, a lot of people a lot of people are not declaring it because some people are are, are then taken by the government to some um, special facilities and they they build these facilities in a hurry and some of them have the you know uh, the dirty water recessing you know coming up from the toilet and all kinds of nice stuff like that and and of course you you get fed <laughs> let's say not the best food. Mm. So people have just decided, hey, I, I just stay home and uh, and 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 that's it. And I don't I don't tell anybody. There, there's a lot of cases like this from from. What but, which is absolutely okay as long as they do stay at home. I guess so. Yeah, I mean they're not exactly respecting the the, the regulations, but yeah, I'm 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 yeah. not going to blame them. <laughs> I can see about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Hong Kong's had it pretty hard, but I think I think the genie's really out of the bottle with. Um, Omicron, you know, I just don't. Who knows if we're still going to be talking about this this time next year? You know, uh, hmm. China pursuing zero COVID. But uh, you mentioned to me, sort of off air before we started. I mean, they've gotten through a couple of years so far, relatively unscathed. But I mean, how many years can it carry on? It's, it's hmm. just impossible to say, isn't it? Right, 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 right. Yeah, we will see. Hmm. So in the context of manufacturing and, you know, if you've got suppliers in China, this is the point of mentioning this. At the moment, th- there are more outbreaks, but we're not we're not anywhere near sort of a full lockdown in China. But mm. if these hit manufacturing areas, those factories get closed, you know, deliveries don't happen, you know, your, your, your supply chain might be impacted. So it's definitely, and we, as we always say, it's definitely worth just checking in on suppliers and keeping an eye on the news i guess so yeah that's the uh that's the covid situation quick update thanks for no so go back to cradle to cradle product design then before we talk about c2c i think we need to sort of turn back the clock to the dawn of manufacturing so you know since maybe the 1800s manufacturing on mass has been going on and mm-hmm. We can agree probably that uh, it's been unsustainable, to, to be fair. And right. in, in recent years, recent, you know, the last century, it's been trying to be less bad. And then we've got very modern methodologies or ethos, however you want to call it, like C2C. So um, mm-hmm. could you just go into a little bit more detail about about how we got from unsustainable to trying to be sustainable, please? Right. Sure. Well, for a long time, no one really cared that much about being sustainable, right? A lot of resources were seen as infinite or, or pretty close to that. And I think mm. a lot of people started to to ring the bells in the 70s and, and say, you know, we need to curb the population growth. We need to stop. I mean, obviously, we then they were not the first ones to say that, but uh, under the angle of we're not going to be able to to keep going like this. Our planet only has certain finite resources and so on. And 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 then over the years, uh, also you know, um, concerns about um, climate change, concerns about massive waste degrading the environment has become mm. uh, stronger and stronger. I mean, these concerns have become stronger and stronger. So. Ooh, yeah, we're going from, uh, you know, take, make and waste as sort of a normal course of business to, well, maybe let's try to take a little bit less and and, and maybe make in a, a more efficient way and, and let's try to not waste too much. And this is the dominant thought pattern these days, right? Mm. When you, 
when you listen to what people say or the, you read the, the descriptions of the products, they say, well, and we, um, you know, we make this without uh, palm tree oil. So, you know, it's, we, we, we try not to take too many um, bad things from the environment, you know, that cause too many issues. Or we try mm. to make uh, whatever, the motors without magnet, and we try to, to make batteries. Let's try to go to batteries without lithium and, and so on and so forth. And, and that, of course, that's positive. It's it's doing less worse, right? Um, mm. And 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 waste. Well, let's try to avoid creating too much waste. So, a lot of countries are going after single-use plastic uh, because it's just dumped immediately. So is is um, that's you know, people are, are pretty aware that that's bad, uh, and and yeah. and there's a lot of focus on recycling. Like if you go on the, 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 for example, the Apple website and you have a look at what they do with the aluminum of the the, the, the unibodies of the MacBook Pros, well, they say it can be recycled mm. pretty much indefinitely, which, which you know, sounds great. And obviously that's more progressive than let's just dump it and uh, and keep extracting uh, aluminum ore and process it and, and ship it around and everything, right? Sure. So the, the, the whole uh, focus is on doing less bad. Yeah, okay, we're going to make you less guilty. You buy this stuff, but, you know, with a bit of luck, if it if it ends up in the wrong, in the right channel after end of life, it's not going to do too bad. But what some people say is that it's not really, still not sustainable, right? Mm. Uh, but let, let's focus on that not very sustainable, but better than nothing sort of approach. There's been more and more focus on doing what they call life cycle assessment of a product you know so this product you know you get to extract you know maybe raw materials and process them and so on and, and do some manufacturing and ship it here for distribution and and and, and you need to um you need to pack it to protect it and da, da, da. and then when it's in use maybe it, it, it has a worse effect than another product you know let's say for example more energy efficient home appliance is going to have a much lower impact on the environment than a, a, a much less efficient one. And, and, and then end of life, what happens? Can it be recycled easily? And, and, and so on, right? There's, there's been more and more focus on this and it's really the focus on the, of the environmental management systems, such as ISO 14001. And, and there are very uh, specific methods, very specific standards. It's some other ISO standards of the 14,000 family that really show you, you know, how to make such an assessment of the life cycle impact of a product on the environment. Um, and people call it also cradle to grave. So it's, it's like a, you know, a, a person when they are born all the way to, to their death right? and mm -hmm. after their death, it's the life cycle assessment is the same idea. And again, this is, not bad it's good to work on that but it's still not really sustainable and you're just going to the same sort of conclusion that you know all of the resources would be depleted and and the environment will will be really degraded and so on you're just getting there slow more, more yeah, slowly yeah 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 right and and that's why some people say no no this is not sustainable it's not good there are better ways. And as often, the people who came up uh, with more, um, let's say, um, more enlightened, more like new ways of, of doing things and new, maybe a new, new philosophy really are, are designers, right? Because they, mm -hmm. the, the product designers have so much responsibility in, in, um, in, in what they do because really they have control of certain things you know when they pick that material versus that material or and, and a lot of influence really on um on the product when when they i don't know when it's a heating system or or cooling system and you make it more energy efficient by adding insulation and 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 and, uh, and so on and, and looking for better ways to 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 do things to 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 um to get the product to do what it's supposed to do in a more efficient way by consuming fuel resources, well, 
this has a tremendous impact on the on the environment. Mm-hmm. So it's it's quite normal that designers would be at the forefront of this. And where, where, where you were coming, talking about C two C. So as 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 I mentioned, this classic sort of um, from the time when the product is born to when it's dead uh, kind of approach, you know, looks at uh, cradle to grave, right? The full life cycle, cradle to grave. But some people say, wait, 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 this whole idea about grave, you know, is really the worst idea because yeah. if you can avoid actually putting, you know, that dead body in a grave, <laughs> You know that that is great because you avoid so much waste, right? So mm-hmm. it's, it's it's really sort of the focus, and the, the key image is to avoid the grave, and it's cradle to cradle. So maybe this product ended its life, but then it becomes the source of the life of a new one, right? And so it's all about reusing and and recycling. <laughs> Because when when people say, oh, yeah, it's fine, it's recycled. Oh, this, I don't know, this piece of clothing is is uh, recycled, uh, I don't know, bottles of water and, and things like that. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. These bottles of water, you know, made in, uh, in, in PET plastic, I mean, they were never designed to be transformed into, in, in, into clothing, right? Into that kind of synthetic fibers. Now, how much processing did that take? How many additives were necessary for that? Maybe it would have been actually better to to just make the synthetic fiber directly from you know the, you know in the most efficient way that that we know of from virgin materials. And mm. also, every time we talk about respect, you know, about the environment, we also talk about the impact on people's safety. It's it's actually people kind of misunderstand that the thing that. Environmental management systems such as ISO 14001 are only about reducing pollution and you know extracting fewer resources from the environment and things like that. Well, mm. it's also about reducing harm on people. You know, yeah. Um, not not animals. I, I that might come in the next version of 14001, but but it's really uh, reducing harm on people. And when you have a product that has been "Quote unquote recycled in a way that it was not supposed to be recycled. You know, it was not planned. That it was not designed to be recycled that way. What are the the, the impact on health? What about the the the, the you know different uh, volatile organic compounds uh, going around? You know, formaldehyde and 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 things like that. What about the additives that you need to add into it? What about you know the, the, there's a serious health." Um, health risk here and i'm not coming up with all this stuff it's it's all uh, actually very well uh, laid out in a book by a couple of designers a couple of um, industrial designers it, it was published 20 years ago actually <laughs> uh, mm. called cradle to cradle remaking the way we make things you know Cradle to cradle, to, to cradle. They really say, no, no, stop this idea about waste. Let's try to to move closer to an ideal of having products be reused or be reprocessed to make new products that are as good as the first one, not mm. what they call downcycled, uh, which means. Mm. You know, like the the the, the PET bottles that go, that that end up being a sweater, or um, uh, there's a lot of things like that. You know, uh, that car yeah. tires that they grind up and they turn it into the uh, like the rubberized right. flooring that they use in children's playgrounds in the park. Yeah, that's a that's a good example. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or some some kind of carpets and and mm-hmm. and so on. And and you know, since all of that is called recycled. We're kind of suckers for it, you know. Whenever I see, oh, this is made from recycled whatever, oh, okay, I get a little bit of a warm feeling, you know. Oh, people have been, you know, trying to uh, to do mm. something good here, but yeah, sometimes the, the the energy consumed in reprocessing it and the additives added to it make it for, you know, a let's say not a very good material 
that doesn't have mm. all the physical properties maybe that it should have. And it means it will have a shorter lifetime. And who knows about the health effects? Maybe people have not really cared about it so much. And maybe making that material right away from virgin materials might be the better the better idea, right? So mm. there's, there's a lot of um, food for thought here. I mean, I think it's obvious that we're not going to be able to do that with all kinds of products that, that we use. But what the two guys who, uh, who wrote Cradle to Cradle mean is that designers have a huge responsibility in that. And they should keep that sort of ideal in mind, let's say. Mm. Right. So the, 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 the key idea here, if we say no waste, cradle to cradle, in another in other words, it's circular, right? So we've we, mm. we've heard about that more and more over the years, the circular economy. Uh, it's like we don't send stuff to landfill or burn it. We don't keep digging materials off the ground or, or cutting trees and so on. We reuse and like it's circular. That that you know, obviously it's a beautiful image. It, it, there's also a focus on materials and using materials that are not harmful to to people's health. There's a focus on energy. Where does the energy come from? Does it mm. come from hydroelectric, solar, wind? You know, this sort of um, what what they call renewable energy sources, or does it come from burning coal uh, or gas or uh, or nuclear you know and i have to say there's a little bit of um <laughs> i would say an ideological uh position here you know most people will say well nuclear of course is not nice it also uses fossil fuels but also some 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 other people say well yeah but what's going to kill us in the medium term maybe is carbon carbon emissions and nuclear is actually not bad at all right yeah. even compared to to solar and wind so um there's this you know a lot of people just hate the idea about nuclear energy so whatever and and they love the idea about um hydroelectric solar wind uh and and again this brings me back to what i was saying it's sort of an idea of being sustainable and obviously, mm. we if we if we can make financing easier for these renewable energies, if we if we put more of this out there, that you know, mm. is that a plus? Yes, of course. But on the other hand, I I remember a, um, a story about a uh, manufacturer in in China that we we're working with, and they were making glasses, you know, eyewear frames, mm-hmm. and. They were so excited. Oh, we we found a way, a, a place in that. Uh, I think it was in Sichuan, in Sichuan province in China. Oh, we have a place. We we set up the uh, a little factory there because it's close to a dam, and then all the energy, all the electricity consumed there is is hydro energy, and we can mm. tell our customers that it's renewable energy. And I was like, well. In the grand scheme of things, actually, you're making things worse because <laughs> whether you consume the, the, the electricity in in, uh, in Sichuan rather than Guangdong, the total the total electricity bill for China is is, is the same, and they, they still have to make as much energy with nuclear and coal and gas and so on. Anyway, mm-hmm. so you're just moving things. You can see you, you can tell a good story to your customers, mm-hmm. but it's it's not very serious. Because anyway, you consume the, the hydroelectricity there, so there has to be more coal uh, to be burned because the hydroelectricity doesn't cover as much as it would have without you anyway. And then right. you you keep flying your management from, uh, from Shenzhen to, to Chengdu to uh, to keep following up on that, and you and you you send materials by truck. This is making things worse, you know. But of course. The customers are suckers for it because they can say, well, made with recycled, oh, renewable energy. Oh, that's great. You know, so to take this seriously, we need to see it as a, an ideal and, you know, a direction in which to go. But it's also possible to, to be a little bit ridiculous 
on, on, on that point. You know, yeah. cradle to cradle, they also, of course, um, emphasize working conditions. You know, it, it, it's always a plus anyway. People should not should not work in uh, in, in in poor conditions, in, in dangerous situations, and uh, and so on. You know, people's safety. That's the, that's the concept, and mm. it makes a lot of sense. Just talking about renewables, I mean, uh, it's hard, isn't it? Because that's sort of a countrywide initiative. Um, if China reduces its fossil fuel energy output and replaces it with re- renewables, then the issue that you've described, it becomes mm-hmm. less of a problem, right? But the manufacturer mm-hmm. can't dictate that. That's That's up to China. Well... How to say some manufacturers put you know solar panels on their roof mm. and they you know they do a certain number of things and and there are ways that that are you know smart i mean obviously if you have to to uh, to use some heat for certain things make sure you you don't lose that much heat and you you know try to consume less that, that mm. it's always you know f- first try to to go with um uh, re- reduce, reuse, recycle. And there's a lot of things that people can do, reducing energy consumption, reducing uh, material consumption in a way that also saves them money. So of course they should go with that first. And 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 it's um, there are several levels to that. And yeah, if they want to put a few solar panels on the roof, I mean, why not? You know, mm. it, it, <laughs> uh, South China used to be a bit foggy. Now it's it's a little bit less foggy, hopefully. Yeah. Um, S- smoggy. <laughs> yeah, smoggy. Yes, yes, smoggy. Why not? You know, but does it make a difference if they put it on their own roof versus, I don't know, uh, investing in a in a sort of farm or you know, th- there's a lot of ways to to do that. Yeah, and I like the I like your mention of cost saving as well, and we'll come on to benefits and drawbacks a little bit later on but cost uh in some ways certainly maybe you know reduction of energy use and things like that is it's certainly a possible benefit if we just move on to the c to c certification it's actually possible to be cradle to cradle certified and to you know put this on your product or your website or whatever mm-hmm. so tell, tell us a little bit more about the certification so there are a number of certifications, right? If you want to show that your product is is green, there's there's a bunch of them. Oh yeah, um, yeah. and maybe Adrian, you can put a, a link in the show notes to to a list of um, of mm. the most common certification schemes uh, for 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 products or for companies and, and so on. Yeah, um, one of them is C two C, and it's really based on the principles of the cradle to cradle book and they put a standard based on the, the principles of the book and they um they are the i don't know maybe the fourth version of the standard so it's it's already yes, really, I think really so. mature and they make it possible to um to certify a product based on that standard right so it's product by product you might have 10 products in your portfolio. Maybe one of them is more green than the others. And you you you, you can slap that um, certificate uh, mark, you know, on that product only, not on your wool company. And yeah, we, we, we looked at it actually close up last month because we had a, um, a customer say that they, they want us to do certain things to, to go for... Um, uh, for the bronze certification well mm. there so you can be c2c you know, cradle to cradle certified e- even if you are far far from being in the in the circular economy even if it's very much cradle to grave but yes. there is bronze silver gold and platinum there, there are four levels and you can start at the bronze level which is very much cradle to grave you know let's Let's do less harm. Let's um, let's quantify. You know, let, let's let's do risk analysis. Let's quantify a little bit about you know the good, the bad stuff that our product does, and let's let let let's do certain things to reduce the the, the bad impact of the product. Mm. And you 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 cannot 
keep that product on the bronze level forever. I think after four years, you need to go up to um, to, to to the silver level or you get kicked out. Uh, I mean, there are a few conditions. It's not, uh, it's not very, very simple, but uh, it's all online, by the way. People can can just Google um, C2C standard, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll add links in the show notes, right, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like all of these certifications, um, not all of them, but often these uh, eco certifications, shall we say, they tend to be c- continual uh, progress. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's okay. Take, take a good count of where you are, do your assessment, do your risk analysis, you know, it's, it's a little bit like ISO 14001 mm. without the management system uh, aspect of it. Now, if as you go up into the levels, you, you need to um, to get closer to that. You need to also have a management system. And then you also, um, you need to go further you know, than the base requirements of ISO 14001 for sure as you get closer to uh, to the platinum level. And well, I'm, I'm not going to you know go through all the details, but the, the five... Sure. Um, the five big topics of this C2C standard uh, are number one, material health, you know, materials used should not have a, uh, a negative impact on, uh, on people's health. So you're looking at mm-hmm. phthalates and formaldehyde and, and there's a long, 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 long list of, um, of um, uh, restricted or forbidden um, substances. Number yeah. two is material reutilization. So that that's really yeah, the, the key idea of uh, when, when people say cradle to cradle, right? Um, how can you make sure that it's very easy to recycle in a way that, you know, that makes a product that just as good and so on and so forth. So basically, how close are you to, to that idea of mm. total or, uh, to- totally circular economy? Number three is about renewable energy and carbon management. So, you know, yeah, like if you put solar panels in your roof, if you do things for uh, maybe insulation, or uh, if if you're in a in in a place that um, um, how to say that doesn't burn too many fossil fuels and so on, you 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 get more points basically. And uh, and if you if you if you're not doing good, then you can still uh, buy some um, some carbon credits or something similar, right? Uh, mm. So you, if you have a bad conscience, you, you you can pay your way out of it uh, to an extent. To an extent. N- n- number four is about water. So if you're in a, in an area where water is scarce and some of the mat- manufacturing processes use a lot of water, well, that that's kind of an issue. Uh, if I really summarize uh, very very briefly, and number five, social fairness. Yeah, it's you know uh, treating people the, as as you know as they should be uh, treated, not yeah. not as slaves, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. And just to just to make the point, am I right in saying that they don't just audit you? They do, they also audit your suppliers as well. So it's sort of like a, an entire supply chain. Um. It depends at what level. At right, the bronze okay. level, they, they, they only look at the final, yeah, basically the final assembly plant. Uh, but you need to need to have some data about some of the most uh, impactful activities in your supply chain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as you okay. go up, then the requirements become more stringent. Right, right. Okay, I see. To, to sort of crystallize this in people's minds, I mean, there's actually quite a lot of C2C products out there, but they're still not always that mainstream. A, a good example, in my opinion, are mm-hmm. some Adidas trainers or sneakers, uh, mm-hmm. the Ultra Boost DNA Loop sneakers. And these are basically made of one material. The entire thing is made of just one material, the sole, everything. And when it's lifetime finishes so you've worn them out i don't know there's a hole in them or whatever because you've been running marathons you put them in a bag that comes with them send them back to adidas and then they put them into a grinder and they're literally pulverized into little bits and then that's it's it's a type of plastic is just reused again to make more sneakers and that's literally uh you know like that's purely circular isn't it 
Yes, that's pretty close to um, mm. to 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 a pure circular economy. I don't know if the bag itself is recycled together. Maybe it is. I think I think the bag's recyclable as well. Yeah, right. I think it is. <laughs> but I, I don't know about the laces, for example, or um, yeah, it doesn't have metal eyelets. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the laces. Maybe the laces need to be removed. I'm not sure. Um, mm. And maybe the label on the front with some colors, uh, I guess that has to be removed. Um, so it's 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 as close as they can reasonably get. Mm. Um, yeah, because when, whenever there are dyes, you know, uh, pigments of some sort, it, it makes it harder to to recycle. So um, yeah, that that's a very nice example. I mean, they really they really did a nice job. Mm. So I mean, that's one example. There are other, there are also cleaning products um, in the states. I think method cleaning products are quite popular. And again, I mean, these are you know non it's got non harmful. Uh, ingredients so it, it's the same cleaning performance but when it goes down your sink it's not going to you know kill all the wildlife and and destroy the water table and whatever so uh yeah. I, I, I assume that's the <laughs> that's the thinking behind it so yeah yeah yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah 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 there's also okay. this uh this office chair of steel case so they say it uses 42 percent recycled content and it's 98 mm. percent recyclable well, you know, they get closer to the ideal. Uh, and this really mm. has to be designed in. I mean, just like the, the sneakers from Adidas, this has to be planned from the very start. Otherwise, you don't pick the right materials and you don't, you, 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 yeah, you, you don't give it right. the right um, the right form function and everything. So Sure. And uh, that takes me on to the next point, really, mm. which is, you know, uh, and you've already mentioned product designers and product designers have a big role to play when we're looking at C to C. What do they need to be considering when designing when designing a product to try to sort of, I don't know, comply with C to C's demands? Well, uh, that, that, that's the right question, yes. And as I mentioned before, this is all in the hands of product designers and, of course, their management, right, to... to, mm. to uh, to, to give them the brief uh, of um, let's try to be more circular, uh, to, to make our products more circular. But without a, a good designer doing doing a good job is really not going to work because they always need to stretch the envelope a little bit. They always need to explore new territory here. So, I mean, they, of course, they need to to keep it to to um to take into account aesthetics and some some other u- usual criteria, but it can be bent a little bit. Like if you remember the um, the, the Toyota, what is it, Toyota Prius? I mean, it, it's not the most beautiful car, right? No. But it you get really really popular in some areas like Silicon Valley. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's still is actually now. It's probably all Tesla there. <laughs> But you don't see many uh, of them on the road now, but in my opinion, yeah, right, right, right. I'm, I'm not sure what happened to the sales of the, to the Prius, but mm. you know, 15 years ago, the, the, this was not a be- beautiful car, but it was mm-hmm. it was really designed around a, a, a statement, you know, and and it really found its market. So, the designers should, if there really is. Uh, a segment of the market that is ready to um, to go out of their way to use a product that is that is circular or close to circular, they will forgive the designer for not making it very very pretty, right? Mm. Okay. Uh, then uh, yeah, same thing with functionality, you know, uh, durability. I would say, if you don't make it durable and and reliable. It's going to fail earlier now. If it's very easy to turn it into a, another product, does it still matter? You know, you need to to balance the, the the pros and cons here. Now, assembly and disassembly, or if it has to be ground, you know, do, do people have to separate different parts of the product to um, to to recycle it? That is that is kind of important. Uh, is you know is there some I don't know some glue to some staples some some whatever you know to remove is it kind of difficult to uh, to process it to 
to to recycle it, that that would be a big problem, right? So this has to be taken into account from from the start. Uh, the materials, obviously, materials that again are not harmful to 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 people's health, but also can be re- relatively uh, easily recycled without losing uh, the, the the properties of the material. And if possible, yeah, in 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 sourcing, you know, are there sources of that material already recycled? Is it possible to make it with as much recycled material as possible in the first place? Because you you're never gonna get to 100% recycled. I mean, in for 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 most consumer goods, it's kind of impossible. There's a lot of products that people will just keep in their home until they send it to the landfill. It's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. And so um, and and yeah, and what what if people just throw it away can it be bio is it biodegradable or um, compostable or you know uh, basically is it going to stay in its current state and keep polluting the the environment for a long time right Mm. so uh, these are some of the key considerations i would say yeah so quite a lot more to think about uh Mm -hmm. sort of a more complex design for sure yes okay so as we come towards the end then, let's look at benefits and drawbacks of C to C. Ultimately, if everything was C to C, that would be perfect for, you know, humans, the world, everybody, right? But it's not quite that simple, is it? But nonetheless, let's start with some of the benefits, please. Sure. Well, first, the environmental impact of the products is much, much lower. If it's perfectly circular, that's you know perfectly grave to grave. Uh, sorry, cradle to cradle. Um, obviously, there's less extraction of materials, less processing, less transportation, and so on and so forth. Some sometimes it is a way also to save money. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe this Adidas people. They receive the the products. They just regrind it and remake it. It 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 might actually cost them less. I have no idea. You know, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and so on. Uh, then, rather than making it from from scratch again, I'm not really sure. It kind of looks like a concept, um, <laughs> like a concept car. You know, that let's let's see if it works and let's uh, let's see in the end what you know what the impact really is. But mm. I, you know, hopefully over the years they they fine tune it to the point where it's actually cheaper to to get an old one, clean it, because it's got to get cleaned anyway, right? Uh, Clean it, maybe remove the laces and the labels and everything, and then put it in the grinder and then make a new one again. Uh, That if you design it properly, that's probably possible for a lot of products. Uh, Same thing with recycling of aluminum and, and materials like this. Of course, there is a marketing uh, aspect to it. You you can claim that you have a green product and you can explain why in a way that pretty much all your competitors will be unable to, right? And there's a segment of the market, probably a growing segment and probably a relatively affluent segment of the market that does care about that. So hopefully you get more sales and you might be able to charge a higher price point. And overall, at the level of the company, it comes with a better reputation, a better image of the company. And it, it's also more and more important when it comes to raising money as most investor groups now try to evaluate the ESG uh situation of their portfolio mm. companies right good point uh, so um yeah the, the, obviously there are, there are positives here mm. and the the greenwashing aspect i suppose g- given that this is audited it's less it's less likely to be used for greenwashing than maybe other certifications out there um yeah, it depends on the certification scheme uh with c2c yeah. i think they've done a good job Mm-hmm. Uh, of you know avoiding the the, the greenwashing effect. I mean, you mm-hmm. you can't be 
gold or platinum level just with greenwashing and there's 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 no way no too much to do yeah yeah okay so some of the drawbacks though well it's more challenging i mean you see more difficult i see more challenging and more difficult Mm. yes for for designers it it will take longer to to get something like that to the markets it it will it will take more efforts it is you know it makes for a riskier new product introduction uh, that you know you can go around that so you need to have sort of a balance portfolio approach to your products where you have some very slight incremental improvements on some product categories and then here and there you try to do something new just a little bit of a moonshot maybe and at the same time your organization learns from it and if even when it works you really have something to to please this uh the the, the eco-conscious kind of customers and it it gives yeah it, it can give you a better better image better reputation to your company overall is it hard to get the certification though i think for maybe the you know the bronze maybe not so much but if we're going up to the top levels Oh, yeah. presumably that's one of the barriers in place because it's it's going to really be a big initiative to to actually get that oh yeah oh yeah so i would say if you plan for it from the very beginning it it might not be a huge issue if your product in itself reduces the environmental impact maybe of a certain process or whatever you know it's going to be much easier for example a um, mm. i don't know Last year, I, I saw something pretty cool on Kickstarter is a shower head that consumes less water. Wow, you mm. know, pretty cool, right? So if you, if you make them, if, if, you, if you then select a manufacturer that is uh, located in an area with a lot of renewable energy and, and, and so on and so forth, yeah, you're not going to get maybe the lowest unit cost like that you might get maybe out of China. Uh, but it it might not be that much more expensive. Again, mm-hmm. if you plan for it pro- properly from the beginning. I see. Yeah, I'm just trying to think, you know, smaller SMEs, you know, little um, oh, hardware yes, startups. And, and yes. it, because it, it's like consumers, right? We all know that uh, C2C products or or products with, you know, a reduced environmental impact are, air quotes better but they're mm-hmm. often more expensive so even uh, consumers with less disposable income they would like mm-hmm. to buy it but they're, they're they've got that barrier in the way and Perfect. i suppose the same goes for smaller organizations doesn't it that's that's, that's one of the problems so uh, i have to say unfortunately yes being being certified i mean you can do all these good things without being certified right don't get me wrong mm. but if you if you want to connect it to to, to your marketing and and try to get some uh, some extra visibility and 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 extra sales from it, it it's it's often necessary to get certified you know again to distinguish mm. yourself to separate yourself from the crowd of green, green washers right but if you're a tiny company and if you're not really into the um, you know the ISO management systems and and and, and things like that and and documenting what what you do and documenting your supply chain and keeping a lot of visibility on what happens and so on it is going to be harder of of course and yes it's possible to work with consulting companies there's a lot of consulting companies more and more it's like Mm -hmm. it's an exploding field because there's exploding demand too so Mm -hmm. you can of course find you know sustainable sustainability experts and, and and consultants and whatnot and they will help you and they would do all the the paperwork preparation and tell you what to do and 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 tell you how to document it and so on it is possible yeah and of course it is a cost okay yeah you mentioned getting help if you need to what are some of the things that uh, we can do here at sophie's to to help somebody who's interested in uh, pursuing a more eco-friendly path well first you get to clarify, do you want greenwashing or do you really want to reduce the impact of the products? Because mm. we, when, we, when we probe, we find that a lot of companies are just trying to do greenwashing. Right? Oh, I want to have 
like some kind of claim, you know, to put on my product web page, uh, on my Amazon page or whatever, so that some people will click and, and buy this one rather than another one, you know. But actually, they don't care about the environment. They just want a gimmick to uh, to help with their sales. And now if for, for, for companies that want to, to do a better job, there's, there's many little things that can be done. I mean, obviously, the biggest one is try to produce as close to pos- as close as possible to your markets, right? But if that's not really an option, there's a lot of other things you can do. Uh, what about your packaging? You know, that's usually the, the the easiest thing to change. And actually, we prepared a list of um, examples of of um, uh, types of packaging, and we kind of. Um, evaluated them on, on their environmental impact, right? So there's a lot of yeah. options uh, and and some of them have a lower impact than others. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, let, let, let's put a link to that in uh, in the show notes then. Um, yeah. Uh, there's, if your product, I don't know, if your product has plastic parts, try not to use certain kinds of plastics and perhaps the... the you know, the one that most people think of is PVC. Try to avoid PVC because when when they do the finishing, you know, when they make PVC, they, they, they um, I mean, it's just a horrible process. Uh, try, try to avoid that um, that specific plastic. There are some others like TPU that might be a bit more expensive, but uh, that have better properties and, and at the same time are more envir- environmentally friendly. You know, so th- these are... Mm. You know, a couple of examples, but really, you know, the, the energy efficiency, you know, is is a big one. If you have some kind of electrical appliance, for example, right? And mm-hmm. also another one that we discussed at length in previous pod- podcast episodes is durability and reliability. If you make a product that's going to break after one year, you know, versus a much better design that will last for, I don't know, four or five years, right? There's a huge difference, a huge difference, right? Because people are not going to, not going to keep, um, keep buying it every year. Yeah. And, and that's, mm. that's also one of the arguments of, um, of Apple, for example, they say, yeah, right. I mean, we, we might be 50% more, ex- more expensive than, some Android models that um, comparing the specs, you know, are pretty similar, but people on average mm. will keep those for two years and they will keep our iPhones for maybe three years and a half. So yeah. in the end, in the end, which one is, um, which one is better, right? Yeah, I, I would agree with that statement. I've had my iPhone for five years now, still going strong. Wow, nice, nice. Is it yeah. a, uh, a iPhone 6 or iPhone 10. 10. Oh, already that many years. Because they wow. came out in 2017, I think. Oh, okay. I think that's yeah. when I got it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. Great. Okay. Well, that, that's been a really interesting episode. I think sustainability, energy reduction, and and of course, catering for today's consumers. A lot of things which are probably on the minds of importers and manufacturers, anybody that's developing new products these days. So learning about C to C and, uh, and you know, what came before really, really useful. So thanks for now. That's great. You've also, you've mentioned uh, a number of resources. Yeah. We've written on all of these things. So I urge everybody to do check the show notes as ever. There will be links in there to loads of great stuff. Great. And just, just a word. Uh, I say it from time to time, but it's really quite important if you like the, the podcast, if you think that we bring some value, uh, please go into whatever app that you use. I don't know if it's Apple Podcast or Stitcher or some some other apps. And, you know, give us five star if you like it. Mm-hmm. Maybe give us a little review. We'll, mm. we'll, uh, we'll have a look at it and it will give us a warm feeling. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah, please spread the word. Uh, we'd love mm-hmm. that. So that's great. Okay, thanks for now. Hey, thanks, Adrian. Thanks again for listening to this podcast brought to you by the Sophie's Group. 
We're on a mission to provide you with everything you need to manufacture effectively in Asia, including inspections, auditing, new product development support, contract manufacturing, 3PL warehousing and fulfillment, and much, much more across Asia's key manufacturing areas. Visit us at sofeast.com, that's S-O-F-E-A-S-T dot com, to learn more and get help. If you've enjoyed the podcast today, please do rate, review and share because it will really help others discover us too.